All right, what's going on, y'all? Um, back at it with another one. And uh, I know by now you probably have heard about the situation uh, down there in Hoover, Alabama with Carly Russell, who went missing for two days and later returned to our home on foot after reporting uh, a call to a 911 operator that she saw a child walking on the interstate. So um, police, they just uh, had a press conference uh, not too long ago here. And um, I think that there's still a lot of questions. You know, I, I think we have more questions now than answers, really. Um, something just still doesn't seem right about this. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to show you this. This is from the press conference. This is about, what, four minutes, maybe. And... Um, you know, just come back, you know, with my thoughts about this whole situation as usual, um, because it, it, it is strange. And I know a lot of people are finding it strange. So, uh, yeah, check it out. At 1044 p.m. on July 15th, the Hoover 911 center receives a call from Carly's residence stating that she returned home on foot. In subsequent investigations, detectives obtained surveillance footage of Carly walking down the sidewalk alone prior to arrival at a residence. She was conscious and speaking with paramedics when she was transported to UAB. Detectives were able to obtain a brief statement from her prior to being treated and released. During the statement, she told detectives that while traveling down the interstate, she saw a baby walking down the side of the road and called 911. She stuttered when she got out of her vehicle to check on the child, a man came out of the trees and mumbled that he was checking on the baby. She claimed that the man then picked her up and she screamed. She stated he then made her go over a fence. She claims he then forced her into a car and the next thing she remembers is being in the trailer of an 18-wheeler. She stated that the male was with a female. However, she never saw the female, only hearing her voice. She also told detectives she could hear a baby crying. She told detectives the male had orange hair with a big bald spot on the back. She said she was able to escape the 18-wheeler and fled on foot, only to be captured again, and then was put in a car. She claimed she was then blindfolded, but was not tied up because the captor said they did not want to leave impressions on her wrists. She said that they took her into a house and made her get undressed. She believes they took pictures of her but she does not remember them having any physical or sexual contact. She stated the next day she woke up and was fed cheese crackers by the female. She said the woman also played with her hair, but could not remember anything else. At some point, she was put back in a vehicle she claims was able to escape while it was in the West Hoover area. She told detectives she ran through lots of woods until she came out near her residence. During this interview, Detectives noted that Carly had a small injury to her lip, and she claimed that her head was hurting. She also had a tear on her shirt. Detectives also noted that she had $107 cash in her right sock. Out of respect for Carly and her family, detectives did not press for additional information in this interview and made plans to speak with her in detail after giving her time to rest. Detectives continue analyzing data from Carly's cell phone that was left behind at the scene. We enlisted the help of the United States Secret Service in conducting this analysis. Part of what data included several internet searches in the days leading up to their disappearance that I think are rel very relevant to this case. On July 11th at 7.30 a.m., the term, do you have to pay for an amber alert was searched. On July 13th, at 1.03 a.m., the day of her disappearance, the term, how to take money from a register without being caught, was searched. On July 13th, at 2.13 a.m., the day of her disappearance, the term, Birmingham bus station, was searched. On July 13th, 2.35 a.m., a search for a one-way bus ticket from Birmingham to Nashville was conducted with a departure date of July 13th. On July 13th at 1210 p.m. a search for the movie Taken, a film about a production, was conducted. There were two searches related to Amber Alerts on a computer at Carly's place of employment 
including one regarding the maximum age of an Amber Alert. There were other searches on Carly's phone that appeared to shed some light on her mindset, but out of respect for her privacy, we will not be releasing the content of those searches at this time. We've asked to interview Carly a second time, but have not been granted that request. As you can see, there are many questions left to be answered, but only Carly can provide those answers. What we can say is that we've been unable to verify most of Carly's initial statement made to investigators, and we have no reason to believe that there is a threat to the public safety related, related to this particular case. Thank you very much. At 10.44 p.m. on July 15th. All right, y'all. So th there you have it. Um, dang. This, this is uh, <laughs> still a lot of questions, man. So, uh, yeah, this thing is not going away. And then they got some other searches um, that they're not even releasing, like, I guess, from the Internet that, that were some other things that were um, searched. So, like I said, this is not going to go away. Um, she's going to have to talk. She will have to talk to the police about it because it, it's only going to get worse. It, it, the police, they got a job to do. They got an investigation to complete. So the longer that this thing drags on, it's only going to get worse. Um, and, and, and it's only going to make things worse for her in the end if it comes out that she made this whole thing up because they already got a search history. I'm talking about searching for stuff like the movie Taken, the Amber Alerts, the bus tickets. Just that stuff right there is going to stand out. That's going to stand out to anybody. You don't even have to be a detective to, to see that that's going to stand out. Um... And you got to think, what else does law enforcement have as far as this investigation goes? Because it's still going on. It's not over. Um, I don't know. Maybe they're giving her a chance to kind of speak with them so they can get more details about the situation before they unload everything that they have. Um, it, it's a cat and mouse game at this point, right? Because with all this technology that's available, you know, you got to think you're on cameras every day that you step outside your home, at grocery stores, at traffic lights, when you're driving, um, even in your own neighborhood, where a lot of people have invested into doorbell cameras and uh, uh, surveillance cameras on their homes. And then your internet search history, you know, what's going on in there, you know, it, they can get that stuff, man. So so could it be that law, uh, law enforcement, they might have something in their possession um, and they're just holding on to it until she talks to them um so that way they can have some type of uh i don't know definitive proof about what happened something so solid that it can't be questioned so the ball is in her court for now and um like i said this is not gonna go away you can't just stay inside and hide forever you know you can't keep telling them that you're gonna talk and you don't see right now they're being patient with everything but eventually that patience is gonna wear out so uh yeah let me know what y'all think about this one did you learn anything new from the press conference were all your questions answered um because you got to remember this this thing is still going on it's not over yet so uh let me know what y'all think and um I i'll see you on the next one peace